All right, everybody. Uh, welcome all to uh, tonight's meetup. Uh, my name is Peter Escho. Uh, I've been with Invast uh, for a while now, uh, really working on uh, the research side of things, working on helping our clients um, make sense of the markets. The markets can be really confusing, but I think there is a lot of space uh, for good quality advice, and that's what we've tried to do right from the very launch uh, of Invast. So some of you uh, have, have been introduced to Invast through this event. Uh, I remember joining Invast, and in the early days, we were in a much smaller office, and it was, it was you know, uh, really about planning the business, and uh, management had a very strong focus on advice, on making sure that we not only go out to clients uh, with the right products and the right pricing, uh, but also with the right advice. And that's really been my role. And I haven't presented at this event yet. Uh, so um, it's very great to, to meet you all. Some of you uh, I've met, I've bumped into to different trade shows. Uh, some, some of you have, have heard my webinars or seen my face. Somebody actually told me today that I look different. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if I should take that as a compliment or an insult, but I think I'll take that as a, as a compliment. Um, it may have been an insult, but... Um, my background is in, um, I'll give you a little bit about my background because it's very important to what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today may not be relevant to everybody here. This is an FX Street meetup. An FX Street by its nature uh, is a Forex type of culture, Forex type of, of forum. My father was actually a Forex trader for about 30 years. So I grew up in a family of, of a Forex trader, but I actually went into the stock space. Uh, so I worked for about seven years uh, building, managing, advising, um, clients around the stock side of things. And I don't think they're two different things because if you're trading foreign exchange or if you have an interest in foreign exchange, uh, that market is very much driven by central banks and central banks respond to businesses and customers and underlying stocks in the economy. So people ask me if I'm a stock guy or an equities guy, I think they're both compatible with each other. And to be a very successful foreign exchange trader, I think you need to know about the fundamentals behind the central banks uh, and really what drives central banks is lobbying from businesses and companies that are driven by results from consumers. So that's a little bit of context into my background. I'm going to try to make this presentation as relevant to everybody uh, because I know that a lot of you here aren't stock traders, for example. And what we're talking about today is um, when Invas came into the market, when I first met Invas, they told me about some very uh, revolutionary products, uh, and Invast in Japan is seen very much as a cutting-edge broking business. Um, and since we've come into Australia, we have launched uh, different types of innovative <coughs> products, and I think the product that I'm going to talk to you about today is perhaps the most innovative product at the moment in the market, in the Australian direct uh, investor consumer market. And I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to talk my way into it, I'm going to show it to you. They launched it this morning, uh, so you are the first set of people that are going to see it, and I'm also going to provide a little bit of context and flavour as to what it actually is. Any questions? By the way, when I run my, my forums, I like interaction. I like questions. Please feel free to ask, interrupt, crack some jokes if you want. <laughs> we have uh, our resident comedian at the front, always good no, for us. No, I'm not getting any money for comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Sit down. So uh, feel free to you know, ask what you like. General advice, risk warning. I like to talk through this because it's very important. Um, I don't like to fly through it because it sets the context and it sets apart why Invast is different to other broking businesses, I believe. So there, there are three levels, I think, of advice. There's information, factual information, and then there's general advice, and then there's personal advice. We are not licensed to give personal advice. Uh, a lot of competitors out there uh, provide factual information. What we try to do is give the best quality general advice. And general advice can be really poor or it can be really effective. I can talk to a crowd tonight uh, on a general basis uh, about how I see the markets and, and, and about the products that we've put together. And then it's for up to an educated audience like yourself to interpret that and hopefully gain from that. So the word general there, a little bit about the risks of the different types of products that we'll be talking about tonight. And very important, we're a licensed firm with ASIC under our own license. 
and we're quite proud of that. Um, investing reinvented. So there might be a few skeptics tonight that say, look, I've been trading markets for a while. Um, I know how to trade markets. You know, I've got a fairly good hand. What are you going to tell me that I don't already know? Nothing, but I'm going to help you organize your thoughts. Um, and what we've really built and rolled out is an organizational type of product. And it's a new shift in markets, and I see investments moving towards this way over the next decade or so. And I think a lot of individual investors are going to see the benefits of this. So thematic investing is what it's called, investing on themes. Um, gentleman asked me right before the presentation, what do you think of the market? What do you think of the market is the most common question I'm asked over, my, over the past 10 years of my career. What do you think of the market? And to me, with all due respect, I think it's a pointless question because I don't think anybody sitting here today is 100% invested in the market. Right? The market is a calculation of the ASX 200 index. It is, is it a statistical calculation? But the smart money out there, the smart investors, the smart traders aren't hugged to the index. Fund managers are, and it's really a fund management type of culture where fund managers meet up at a pub, they're, they're hugged to the index, they can only invest in the index, uh, they can't invest away from the index, and they have a chat about the index and the market. And I think for individual investors, individual investors have a great benefit because they don't need to be benchmarked to the market. Right? Your own money does not need to be benchmarked to an index. This is more so for stock traders, but if you're trading currencies, you can compare yourself to a currency fund manager. Or, or if you're trading bonds, you can compare yourself to PIMCO and Bill Gross and anybody else. You don't need to invest on a relative basis. Absolute returns are what drive individual investors' performance. And that's why we've seen hedge funds, for example, emerge over the past couple of decades and a hedge fund culture um, and that's really why companies like Invast have grown, because of the individual investor starting to take more control, moving away from managed funds. If everybody was in managed funds, we wouldn't be around as a business. So what I'm going to talk about today is thematic investing, very different. Um, I'm going to show you the new uh, platform that we've launched and a little bit of background as to how we've developed that and what's on that. And I'm also going to talk to you about the Invest Investment Committee. What we've done um, over the past few months or so is we've developed an investment committee. Uh, the investment committee meets. The investment committee uh, sits down and talks about the big themes that we think investors should be looking at. Uh, and those themes uh, are really a function of, of what we've developed. Before I go on, any questions? No questions? There has to be one question. All right. That's fine. I guess most of you are thinking, what is this new product and what's he actually going to talk about? So, Does it include FX as well? No. Um, that's, that's the short answer. Um, but I think the reason why people go into the Forex market are because they are looking at investing in a thematic. They are looking at investing in something broader. When you go out and you take a position, I believe, in the, Aussie to, uh, in the, in the Australian dollar against the US dollar, you're taking a thematic view on every single macroeconomic factor in Australia relative to the United States. So by default, you are looking at the thematics. You are looking at the big picture. You are looking at trends. But what drives the U.S. economy? The U.S. economy uh, is a consumption economy, right? So what the Federal Reserve does is really a function of what the companies in the United States are doing. What the companies in the United States are doing are driven by big, broad thematics, and what we've done is we've developed different portfolios around those thematics. So no is the short answer, but no for a reason around thematics is really why this platform does not incorporate underlying forex positions. But there is foreign exchange exposure because the underlying holdings are stocks, stocks priced in different currencies. Different currencies will do different things. So I'll get to that. So thank you for the first question. We'll make sure uh, you get an extra slice of, of pizza tonight. <laughs> there's different types of portfolios. Uh, there's, when, we, when we sat down and we built this product, uh, we knew that within this room there will be different types of investors that want different things 
that have different motivations. They might be trading the, the Aussie US dollar, but really they're trading that because they don't want to trade stocks and they want to take a bigger picture uh, asset allocation uh, theme. Or they might be after certain events. Uh, they might be after macro events. Uh, they might be after certain thematics. And you'll see that today in what we've built out. This is a glimpse of what these thematics look like. I'm going to get into that in more detail uh, as we progress. But I want you to visualise what it looks like before I get to the end result. Glimpse around some of the themes. Okay. Now... I'm cheating tonight. No, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't need good luck with thematic investments, should you? I agree. <laughs> I agree. But there's always an element of luck. And I think if you, if you were to ignore luck, uh, that's being naive too. Oh, yeah. Because it's saying that I'm in control of everything and there's no element of the unknown in markets. So <clears throat> my background is in Australian equities. Uh, when I joined... When I started off my career, I started off in insolvency. I started off working with businesses that went broke. Day in, day out, we were working with businesses that went broke. Why is this important? Because at the bottom of the cycle, there's a lot of businesses that go broke. And when you deal with businesses that go broke every day, you understand what, what generates a good business. What, what is usually lacking uh, in a bad business is not that the actual business or the industry, it's the people. People make or break businesses. I developed a, a, a liking for that. I came into the stock market. I came into the stock market in 2013, advised clients, about 20,000 clients at Morningstar for about seven years. You'd have to show me that later. <laughs> Think of NWT. <laughs> That's right. Um, and the market just kept going up. And it wasn't going up because of good businesses or good people. It was going up because of a thing we were in the foothills of a bull market in the commodity space. Uh, we went into the global financial crisis. We got absolutely smashed. I don't need to tell you what happened in the global financial crisis. Um, after that, Australia has really struggled to, to, as a stock market, as an economy today, as a central bank response, and up all the way to a, to a currency level, Australia has really struggled. Uh, somebody asked me a few months ago, why is the property market so strong? And I said, three reasons. People will use negative gearing and Chinese. That, that's not it. The Reserve Bank has cut interest rates. The stock market has been a horrible place to invest, and that's what I'm going to talk about. And the jobs market in Sydney and in Melbourne has been a lot stronger than the rest of the country. Invest is a perfect example of a Japanese business that has come right on the doorstep of Sydney a lot of global businesses come into Sydney and that's generated a strong growth jobs market. But the stock market is a second important factor and people don't usually look at the stock market when they're talking about property. But guess what? A lot of investors have run away from the stock market because of this. And what this shows you is since the beginning of May, <clears throat> we are now more than two years into it, the stock market hasn't done much. The Australian stock market hasn't done much. It's been frustrating as we spoke about before my presentation. It's been range-bound, and it's been a horrible place to invest relative to other stock markets around the world or relative to other asset classes. How many of you will agree with that? Or how many of you have stock frustration to the point that it's pushed you into foreign exchange, or it's pushed you into gold, or it's pushed you into something else? In Australia, I remember growing up, we had a stock picking culture. Uh, you know, I, I took my first job with Huntley's. Some of you may know who Huntley's are. I worked for one of the best stock pickers in the country. He'd built his business from 1974 off the back of a stock picking culture. That culture has broken down. <clears throat> and it's broken down for a reason. And what I'm going to show you tonight is how you can adapt to that change because we go through changes in investing or you can be a sucker in that change and realise in five or ten years' time that that culture has changed. So <clears throat> the ASX 200 index, this is Invas MT4 platform, which I love and I'm promoting for you tonight. So if you don't have an MT4 account, make sure you go out and get one. How many of you don't have an Invas account at all? Oh, right. I thought you said MT4. 
Everybody here is an Invas client? All right, gents, I'm going to be singling you out. No more beers until you open up an Invas account. Um, <clears throat> my point here is this. This is because of a reason. Who can guess what the reason is? Why has the Aussie market been so hopeless? Commodities. Stop. Excellent. Commodities have been under pressure. All our industrials have disappeared from yonks ago. What is there? The banks and the commodities. You're on the point? That's it. It's not that comes down. It's the structure of the index. The structure of our index is banking. Absolutely, and who wants who wants the uh, the second prize of the night for for okay. elaborating on that? The politician sends a leader. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> One less slice of pizza. For you. <laughs> I'll drink today. <laughs> no, the 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 Australia is very different. We are a one trillion dollar stock market, but the top ten stocks in Australia constitute fifty percent of this. So when people say to me, Peter, what do, you think of the, what do you think of the stock market? Half of that conversation is 10 stocks, the top 10 stocks. The largest stock, who can guess what the largest stock on the Aussie market is? CBA. CBA. How much of the index is it? 20%. No, it's 11%. One-tenth of the conversation is one stock. And we've all seen what's happened because of that one stock over the past week. If you have a look at the S&P 500, for example, <coughs> the top... 10 stocks on the S&P 500 are 17% of the index. 17%. And then when you work from stock 11 to stock 500, you see very similar type of weighting. Not exact, but the statistical significance of stock number 11 to stock number 500 is a lot less, which means one vulnerability can impact the aggregate a lot less. In Australia, we don't have that. The largest stock... Before this, on the Aussie market was, guess what? BHP Billiton. BHP Billiton has been a horrible performer for one statistical reason. It's exposure to iron ore. So, I remember when, when we launched as a business, I stood up and I put up a chart uh, two years ago, uh, and, uh, and I said, the Australian market is overexposed to the iron ore price. If you want to know where the Aussie market is going, have a view on the iron ore price. It was at about 150 a ton. I showed where it had been, and I showed where it was. And if you're trading currencies, guess what? This is what the RBA is talking. This is what the RBA is struggling with today. This is what fiscal policy is struggling with today: the iron ore price. So, this has been very difficult, and a lot of investors have been hugging this. A lot of mum and dad investors, because of our stock trading culture, have been fixed on this. They don't have a finance background. They work all day. They run a business. They, they work really hard. They save a bit of money. They go out and they look at this and they try to make a bit of money here or there. But the trend has been this. Now, this is the top 10, right? This is basically ha ha half of this is the top 10. What's happened from the 50th stock to the 200th stock has been a lot worse. There's been so much value destruction in a lot of smaller businesses that have been exposed to the mining industry. So the Australian stock market has been a horrible place to invest. That's why people are going into property and that's why people are going and doing different things. Now, the problem is uh, we need to, when I talk to a client and they say to me, you've told me what the problem is, what's the solution? The solution is to have a more sophisticated investment product. Uh, sophistication can mean different things. Uh, but what I want to do or what we want to do is remove the index as the benchmark because it's not a true reflection of the overall stock market. Uh, remove the restrictions with being tied to your home domicile. A lot of people say to me, look, I feel comfortable with Australia because we didn't have the problems that we had overseas. And that's true. We had, did not have the banking collapse that you had in the United States or Europe. But you also missed out on the opportunities that Australia did not present. If you think about China or you think about, or you think about India, India under Modi's uh, reforms is on the brink of some big growth upside. Who can name me 
a company here, a consumer business, that is set to benefit from what's happening in China or in India in the top 20 or 30 stocks on the Aussie market? Nobody, because we don't have those opportunities listed on our market. Our market has been a destination for mining capital. The only way the Australian Stock Exchange can compete for listings, Manchester United went and floated in Hong Kong. Prada went and floated in Hong Kong. They don't come to Australia. But if somebody has a mine project, they come to Australia and they raise 20 or $30 million. And that's, that's been the limitation. Now, this is why we have developed uh, thematic investing, removing the restrictions uh, around the home domicile problem, but with an, emerging, with an emerging trend in markets, which I'm going to touch on here and then here, um, which is diversification. So it's all very well to realise the problem, but the solution is to look outside of your home domicile, to look for the opportunities and to have that diversity and to be able to measure that, and diversity is the key. Any questions before I go on further? Anybody confused or unsure? Uh, you mentioned <coughs> somebody has a project goes to Australia to raise $30 million. What about if they go to TSX? TSX, sure, but Canada's had similar problems to Australia. Canada's very similar to Australia for those very problems. For, for that very reasons. It's stock market. It's very much a commodities-based stock market. Its central bank is struggling with the same issues. House prices are a major problem in Toronto, for example. Uh, and if you have a look at the exchange rate, guess what? It's very close to Australia's exchange rate for the exact same reasons that you presented. Now, the scenario you presented is a perfect example around thematic investment. That very question <coughs> is why the fund managers earn their big bucks. The reason you go to a fund manager is because they can do better than this and the really good fund managers don't even look at this. So what I'm going to touch on is we've identified the problem. I'm going to touch on the solution and I learnt a very important lesson and I'm sharing something with you uh, today uh, that's quite personal. In 2011, I was working for this organisation uh, and I was told to build... Uh, their first uh, small cap portfolio. They said, we're rolling out portfolios and funds and we want you to build uh, a portfolio of Australian businesses, of Australian small cap stocks. I said, you know, how, how, how do I do this? Um, what do I pick? What do I choose? Uh, and I learned over six months the importance um, of diversity. Now, I'm showing you this. There's some stocks here that have performed horribly and there's some stocks that have picked, performed well. And a lot of people won't show you their mistakes, but I'm showing you my mistakes tonight. So I spent six months talking to about 400 companies. The advice I was given was speak to companies, go to their office, sit in their reception area 10 minutes early, speak to management, figure out who is truthful, uh, who is passionate about their business, and who's a marketing person that has fluff. Uh, and I learned the most important thing in my career, that when you're investing in a basket, diversity is the most important thing. Because in this list, I had some losers, and they're obvious. The mining stocks were absolute losers. But guess what? So Mincor, for example... Um, where did we buy it? $1.77. And you can all go and see what Mincor is today. Horrible investment. And I'm not going to hide that. Yes. But yeah. On that, like, was there a lot of fluff when you went to speak to these people at Mincor? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, my restriction was this. Uh, I had to include stocks in my portfolio that were covered by the rest of the analyst team. <laughs> so if there was a business that I liked and we didn't cover it, I couldn't include it. So I had to speak to businesses, speak to my analyst team who got the resource stuff wrong. But that's life. Because if you go about your investments trying to avoid mistakes, guess what? You're never going to make an investment. So you have to realise that you're going to get things wrong. But it's about how you get things wrong and how you manage that. 
Sorry, again, what was it that you weren't allowed to include in your portfolio? So if somebody came up to me and said, oh, you know, here's a stock that's going to set the world on fire, and we didn't cover it as a research house, I couldn't include it. Oh, okay. But that's like life. In life, you're always going to have restrictions. You're always going to have that extra amount of money that you can't invest now, that repayment that you need to take out. There's always excuses. There's never a perfect, but that's, that's okay. Can I just ask, what would be the main reason that Morningstar wouldn't cover that particular stock? Because we had, we had uh, 11 analysts, and, and there was 2,000 stocks million. on the market. Right. Okay. And to get an analyst to pick something up means a lot of work. They need to justify it, you need to convince them, and they have to get rid of another stock. Okay. And this was at a time, 2011, where resources were starting to pick up again after the GFC. China was just flooding the system with cash, and it was pre-2012 when commodity prices came back. Point here is this, have a look at this business. And we all know what's happening to that business today. Have a look at this business. $6.15, I'll put that in when it was very expensive, okay? And I was being told, how can you buy Domino's on a 20 times PE when Woolies is on a 19 times PE? Point here is not what I picked, Star Pharma, Certex. Any of you know Certex? Yep. $5.80. Yeah, I don't know that, so <laughs> my lips are sealed. But my point here is this, diversity is the most important thing. And I come from having learnt this lesson, having launched a product, and this portfolio, by the way, has a lot of money under it now through BlackRock's platform and other platforms. What I want to communicate with you today is the importance of diversity and importance of moving away from the index and moving towards investment themes, thematic investing. And that's exactly what we've launched into the Australian market. Invas has taken a view uh, that the most important things for an investor are to decide on what theme is important, what you truly believe in. Do you believe in electric cars? Do you believe in... Uh, Small caps, banks, solar, pick your theme. Build a portfolio of themes. You don't have to pick one thing. Find the themes that are very important to you, that you believe in. At the end of the day, what I also learned uh, with investing is people lose money usually because they rely on the advice of others and because they chase greed and because they have the fear of missing out. When you lose money on your own conviction, you are a lot more likely to bounce back in terms of your investment than when you lose money on the advice of somebody else. That's what I saw during the global financial crisis. A lot of time, people lose money because they've trusted someone else, they get it wrong, that's life, but they can't pick themselves back up. So you have to understand what is important to you. What are the themes that you truly believe in? Now, anybody have any questions? Sure. Questions are great because they help me. It helps me make sure we're, on, we're talking on the same level. All right, here we go. Yes, sir. You, you said you believe in diversity, and you believe diversity is very important in investing. That's right. Agreed, right? Yeah. And you said that Domino's, you, you pick up at a high price and now it's making a very good thing, right? Yeah. What's your exit strategy? When you exit? You My exit strategy? Because all is paper, right? Everything is in paper. Yeah. Point. You say your portfolio, 100,000 become <coughs> half a million. But yeah. What when you exit? All right. Very good question. Do you think somebody that's 30 years old and somebody that's 64 years old should have the same investment strategy? No. Why? Don't live on that long. Because you have different circumstances, right? <coughs> so there isn't one... If you're investing in a fund, if you're writing me a check and saying, I have no idea, I have no convictions, I have no sense of diversity, can you please go and invest this for me? People are doing that on a mass scale. I can't go to your individual circumstance. Okay, so I need to invest on aggregate. But today, as an investor, you decide. You can decide. But what I'm doing is I'm taking it from a Domino's get in or out to a theme get in or out. And when you're trading Forex, when you're trading foreign exchange, that's what you're doing. 
If you're trading foreign exchange and you're not taking a theme, you're purely trading technicals, you're trading numbers on a chart, and I don't know any very good traders that don't take into consideration at least some element of fundamentals, right? So when do you get out of dominoes? When do you get out of this and that? That's up to you. And that's for you to decide. So are there any income-based? Yes. Okay. I'm going to run through a few examples. So that's the and exactly. <coughs> so if you, are, if, you walk into, if you walk into Woolworths, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of products. All Woolworths-based, though. <laughs> in Wool Woolworths yeah. makes, has become the largest retailer in the country because it has created that choice for you where you can choose. There's not much there anymore. Woolworths have gotten rid of a lot of... They're all getting into brand names. There's yeah, more yeah. than if you were to go and to Harvey the... Normals. It's all It's all relative, right? Yeah. So what our aim here is to develop the themes which you can choose the technology that's available today means we can provide live returns. We can add some metrics around risk and valuation scoring, which I'll show you how they're measured. You can transact with a click of a button. And Invas provides a layer of advice on top of that around each of these themes to tell you exactly what the theme is based on and what the underlying holdings are. This isn't for everybody. But this is a product that I'm quite proud of, and I want to show you um, some examples of how it works. So, anybody want to pick a theme? Um, how about dividend? Really how about somebody from the back? Sorry. Somebody from the back. Smart materials? There's about 30 themes. There's about 30 themes uh, at the moment. It's low. Uh -huh. We've launched today, uh, and we have aspirations to roll out much, much more. Uh, there will be Invas developed themes, uh, and there will be a lot of international themes. By the way, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, wrote so much, Jimmy wrote so much business today that the system can't cope. So I'll give you an example of smart materials so all of a sudden you have, remember, remember the frustration that I showed you from May 2013? You can compare that with this. So smart materials, guess what? They haven't been that smart. But remember how we spoke about the Aussie market's problem has been because of materials? And that's where it's replicated here. So a similar type of frustration. You can see the weekly returns against the benchmark. Monthly, yearly, dividend yield. And instead of you having to go out and place every single trade, the system does this for you. Now, you don't need to go into one of these. You can build a portfolio of these. And that goes back to the point of diversification that I spoke about. So have a look at all the underlying holdings. Have a look at the type of diversity in this type of portfolio. That's why when I say we are moving away from a stock picking culture, I believe in the next five or ten years, this is the way the investment market is going. I think individual investors who are out all day, running their jobs, their families, you have a million things on your mind, the, the, the stock market, the stock picking culture has become quite difficult because of the way stock markets function, because of electronics trading. That diversity is very important. You know, hanging your hat on one stock, I think, is a culture that was relevant. Back in the days where you had a stockbroker and chalkies, today it's a different electronic market and you need to be wider. And the beauty to Australians is you enjoy now access to international markets. Tesla, for example. Somebody sent me an article about Tesla today. Um, if I go out and circular key and I ask 10 Australians, do you know what Tesla does? I think 9 out of 10 would have no idea. But it's a stock... It's a stock now. I mean, you're in markets, you know it. But try it. I saw one today. You saw one today. Yeah. I, I drove it and I was... I drove the Model S. So when Tesla launched in the Aussie market, the four-door. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I've driven the two-door. It's more than cars, isn't it? Sorry? It's more than cars. 
batteries, for instance, lithium batteries. Yeah, it's a technology. Actually, yeah, they do batteries. Actually, okay. Yeah. So, this dis and, uh, so this discussion, yeah. right, is an example of the type of discussion that you won't hear on that TV program or you won't read in the financial review. I walked past a gentleman today. I was thinking about my presentation today. I walked past somebody at Met Centre. He was a gentleman maybe in his 50s, late 50s. He had the financial review open. Do you know where he was reading? Which section he was reading? He was reading the back, which is the property section, on Thursdays. <laughs> and the front was just like... So having the ability to, to know where the trend is, he'll probably be reading about this in five or ten years. Right? And the reason why we're showing it to you today is because we know you're a group of traders. Uh, you have an appreciation. You're here on, on, a, on a Thursday night because you want to stay ahead of markets. You want to know what's happening in markets. And you are perhaps more advanced than the average investor. So, madam, this is an example of the smart materials, which you might think, as a contrarian investor, is a great time to buy because of this return. And you can literally just click and check. And because Jimmy wrote so much business today, the... Uh, Mate, the absolutely, go. Can you have a look at the, uh, the one, uh, aging population? Aging population, absolutely. Aging population in Australia. You don't have info care listed there, do you? It doesn't matter because it's a theme. So I want to get you away from picking the. Uh, why are you, why are you so against info care? I'm not. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. But this is the culture we have in this country, where BHP or Rio, Commonwealth Bank or CBA, uh, sorry, Commonwealth Bank or Westpac. And, and it's, it just drives us crazy because we think that's what people sh should be least interested about. You, um, equally weighted across those stocks? We have different weightings for different ones. And that's the beauty of it. So certain... Um, so there's a fact sheet, and the fact sheet will show the weighting. And because we can literally add... Because we can literally and we will add and devise portfolios based on what we want, we will add an Aussie 200 product that's equal weight of the 200 top stocks, which means if you really want, if you really want to own the top 200 companies in Australia, guess what? You're not getting it now with your Aussie 200 ETF because Commonwealth Bank's 10%. Mm -hmm. You're buying 10 stocks and stock 11, to, stock 11 to 200 is half. But we can literally do 5% or uh, point whatever it is um, across the whole portfolio. And that way you see the return in that product against the Aussie 200 index, and guess what? It's going to be very, very different. You start adding that with aging population, with big data, with the Invas portfolios, with everything else, all of a sudden, through five trades, you can literally have an underlying portfolio of about 100 stocks across different exchanges with exposure to different currency risk, different commodities, different themes. And that really is a true representation of what you believe as an investor. If you believe in China, you no longer have to go and buy BHP only and hope that BHP's management do the right thing, BHP's assets and geography do the right thing, and BHP's sovereign risk. And, and, and you're, you're basically writing a check to BHP and hoping that they get it right. Whereas the diversity, as I showed you through the previous portfolio example, is what gets you to be the winner. Diversity, asset allocation, and asymmetrical risk to reward, which I probably won't have time to touch on tonight, uh, are the, the really important. Um, you go and read the best business books. You go and read the, hear from the best fund managers. They seek risk to, asymmetrical risk to a reward, which means if they're going to put a dollar in, they want 10 times return. They want more than one-to-one -one because one-to-one -one is symmetrical. They want a greater reward for the level of risk. And you can do that through the underlying holdings of these products. Diversity. If you wanted to literally own all these stocks, 
you have to either go to a DMA CFD platform and manually trade them, weight them, change them, pick them, research them, that takes time. Or you'd have to go and open up accounts with every exchange and open up settlement accounts and do all that. Whereas you can do this with the click of a button. And the third thing that the smart fund managers do is they pick themes. They get onto the winners. Tesla is a $30 billion stock. That is more than half of the market capitalization of General Motors. So Tesla started off as an idea. Facebook started off as an idea. You know, these businesses started off as ideas, but the smart money got onto them, not because they picked the right stock, because they were looking at the right theme. The guys that made money in Facebook or Tesla lost a lot of money elsewhere. But the winner they got because of their thematic thinking more than offset their losers. That's asymmetrical risk to reward. They probably went in for a million dollar investment and turned it into a hundred million dollar investment. So the thematic, uh, the risk to reward and the diversity is what gets you there. And that's what we believe is exactly what this product provides the individual Australian investor. Probably going to wrap up now. Um, now, on our launch, we're quite proud that we haven't launched with... The reason why it's taken a while is because there's a lot of back testing that's gone into this product. Uh, there has been a lot of rigorous uh, execution testing because there's underlying holdings we've sat with our dealing team and we've made sure it works. It works precisely and it works well. And we've also developed our own strategies. We didn't just go out and take a bunch of strategies. We've actually sat down there and we will be developing more and more. When I spoke about the uh, investment committee at the beginning, some of you may have been thinking, why do you need an investment committee for these reasons? The investment committee decides. I don't decide on myself. We have a panel that decides the theme. We rigorously test it, we back test it, we put it on, we tweak it, and we communicate with our clients every single week about each strategy in more details. Any questions before we wrap up? Something simple. Oh, it's simple questions thing. are the best ones. You know, you got the, I don't know why websites do this, but you've yeah. got the title up there. Currency, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. When you scroll, obviously, it disappears. So why don't they create when you scroll? And it's just a trivial thing, and it's just like, you know, no, that. but that's a good point. Is this, uh, it's like, to me, it's basic yeah. stuff. I do all my Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah. How about I make a deal with you? <laughs> if you, you invest this much in all the <laughs> <laughs> If uh, I think we'll twist Gav's arm if, if you're our best uh, trading client, we'll, we'll put in a request to the design oh, team. Yeah. Any fundamental research going to the underlying companies? It's, all, it's mostly fundamental. Yeah. So you look at gearing. Like that, the to so our focus is larger market capitalized stocks, um, and there's a there's a school of thought in um, in the fundamental space, which I've been in for a while, that the large cap stocks are large caps for a reason. So you can run your numbers, you can scrutinise capital structures, ratios, uh, but there's a reason why companies get into the top 10, 20, 30. That's because investors have built them up to such a large level. And usually, it's, it's a school of thought, right? It's one screening method. So if you want to quickly just pick the best, form a view that, you know what, the market's made a view that these are the largest companies. There's a lot of fund managers that have flown right around the world and put in hours and hours researching this. Good enough for me. The thing is, you don't need to get the one stock right. You don't need to pick that one thing. You just need to get the theme, the composition, and you're automatically in a much better position than you were here. You've moved away from this frustration. You've moved away from this. And, and this is the, the best. This is, this is if you're perfectly indexed to the market. A lot of people aren't. Most of people, most Australian investors are way below this. <coughs> Negative, negative return. That's why they're going out and investing in other things. So, in order to wrap up... Can I just jump in just very yeah. quickly? Can you just go back to the portfolios again? Just to show. The question from the gentleman at the front was, was great. Yeah. In, just, 
one about, not the question, the, the suggestion oh, um, yeah. about the platform, and we will take that on board, but we want this to be an interactive thing um, with our clients as well. As Pete said, we've got about 23 um, platform uh, portfolios developed now. We've got about 20 to 25 on the drawing board that are about to be launched. We hope within a couple of months we'll have 50 launched. But what we want is we want feedback from people as well because the theme, all we need is a suggestion of a theme for a portfolio and then we do all the background research. Our analysts do all that research, do the back testing. It takes probably a couple of months though to develop uh, a portfolio from the idea of the theme onwards. Um, so we want to know what you guys are interested in as the themes. We'll suggest our own themes. We're all coming up with our own themes, themes all, the day, all, all the time. But your thoughts are really important to us as well. So we'll be listening to what you guys say to our staff uh, after this. Um, some of the things that we've already come up with, you know, the other day there was a, a poll in uh, the, uh, the newspaper, I think the City Morning Herald, for the first time in 25 years, the top fear that people have now is not global nuclear, in Australia, is not global nuclear war, it is the housing bubble burst. So we'll be developing a portfolio for that. So a housing bubble burst portfolio. <laughs> um, this is the sort of thing we can do with this product. It can be an event type product. Um, you know, a global disaster portfolio when, it, when, it, when disaster happens. Or say Australia signs an India free trade agreement. There's going to be a, a heck of a lot of companies going to do, uh, benefit from that, but I actually, I don't know what they are. I'd love to be able to push a button and be able to invest in those. Someone smart has done all the research for me, and I can invest in a portfolio that's sensitive to that theme. That's the sort of thing that we're, we're bringing on. So definitely your feedback is really wanted. Sorry to... No, no, it's good. Good point. Um, but uh, that's the sort of thing we want from you. So all those sorts of ideas, <coughs> tell our staff tonight, and we'll be taking note of them for sure. If you just say you've got 20 grand to invest in whatever, would you pick one of those themes, or would you pick two, three, or four of those? I'd always themes? diversify. Okay. But... If you have a strong conviction in one theme, that's for you. There's no yeah, right or wrong. Top, you know, your personal thing will not be... That's you. Yeah. Well, and that's the beauty of it. In terms of, in terms of what you see today, there is, as I said, a layer of research on top. So clients who sign up to this will actually start receiving two emails a week on a theme. So two themes a week articulated. So... The themes are actually being pointed to you, and you can decide yet yeah, or not. And that theme is developed. That that short research is backed by the back testing and everything else. When so, you say you decide yes or not when you receive, the that's theme, general, does right? That mean like There's no button yes or no. Going but to be subscribing to one theme at a time. Is no, that what you mean? no. Sorry, uh, I should I should elaborate on that. We're we're not only providing research commentary on the market but also context around the themes. Uh, so because we have about 30 themes at the moment, uh, that means the first 15 weeks, we will cover them all with two a week. And as we roll them out, we're giving peace of mind to clients where they're being given twice a week an insight into each theme, which they may or may not believe in. But at the end of the day, you can go out and buy all of them and just divide your initial capital by 15, right? or 20 or 30 or whatever. The choice is the, the key here. Can you have a stock in more than one theme? Sorry, sir? You don't have to be in one theme. You can pick how many themes you want. No, I understand that, but do you ever have a stock in more than one theme? Good point. Uh, if you do have a stock, if you have the same stock in multiple themes, it will, it will go out and take that stock again. So let's say, for example, you take a position on theme A and theme B and you divide your portfolio up 50%, 50%, and both of them have stock ABC, you will have two positions in ABC, but under that theme. So when you liquidate this theme, move out of it, that proportion is out. And also, our themes are rebalanced quarterly or monthly, and they change. So it's not a theme that stays the same way forever. We constantly scan the market and ensure that the stock's in that. So all we want you to do is think about the theme. Focus on the theme, not the underlying holdings. You can consolidate some of the themes into one. Absolutely. So now, sorry, ma'am. No problem. Um, so you're talking about trading this. Are they meant for a long-term hold or just for short-term? That's up to you, ma'am. 
what we do is we provide you the themes, the holdings, the exposure. Your time frame is up to you. The investment vehicle is CFD, yeah? Underlying holdings are CFDs. CFD. CFDs. The underlying holdings are a CFD, that's right. And the reason for that is because if you went out and took the underlying holdings, there's things about nominee accounts, about settling on a cash basis. CFD product allows you exposure to much larger global markets, but you can adjust your risk level, your margin level, and those things, you can take that into consideration.